um, on the one hand, terrifying, uh, feeling nervous all the time, feeling sick, blah, blah, blah. And on the other hand, truly knowing that this is time that you are truly by yourself and trying to get a freedom in that as well. Sense yeah. of some sort of release, like sort of going, well, I can't go to that party because there's a global pandemic on, you know, Phew, I've hit on the perfect excuse. <laughs> I mean, I'm implying I'm not sociable now at all. I, I really am. But there's something about just that little, I think everybody felt it of not having to appear, yeah. um, not having to be on, not having to, you know, which I love the countless cups of teas. There was an, another form of anxiety that I had that I wonder if you had Caroline, because I think it's something possibly I, I think of it as an like an, a female inherited anxiety in that my mom like you know I was you know she, she was a mom of the 70s you know so it was all women's lib you know and I grew up being taught that the world was mine for the picking and that education was key and to have my own bank account and to focus on my career and my kids if I was if I cho chose to have them uh, and as a result in lockdown in a one bed flat I sat down and realized that part of the problem was that I had I was scared of becoming domesticated mm. there was this inherited this inherited anxiety I felt that if I was around the house too long, that I was somehow missing out on life. There was something of a, of a very distinct female experience about it, yeah. of being in the kitchen of the fecking sourdough dough starters and the banana, blah, 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 blah. I mean, I'm a fantastic cook, but who cares? Who cares? Like, this idea that the kitchen isn't actually, hasn't been our prison. The yeah. idea that the house hasn't historically been uh, a, a fortified jail for us, for yeah. women. So that to be confined there, I did find it very like, oh my God, I'm meant to be out there doing things and inside I'm yes. here eating again. <laughs> <laughs> and I yes. 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 It's like going to therapy for me. For me, it's the, the biggest um, boost of going to therapy for me is not what happens in the room. It's the fact that I've, I've, I've respected myself enough to block an hour out of a week or however you're doing it and dedicating that time to my well-being shows a sign of maturity and respect that I don't exhibit <laughs> in any other hour of the day. You know what I mean? <laughs> I yes. think comedy is where our humanity inherently lies. And I think in all the bad times that I have encountered and all the bad times, that's just through life that anybody I know that I've been with have encountered, there's always been a giggle. There's always been something that will make your heart, that will make you laugh. Because if you laugh, you cry. you know and we've really lost the ability to play and I think you know like I paint pictures which are really really bad but I don't care because I enjoy myself and and I never have that pressure of thinking is this good enough to sell because I know they're not you know and it takes all that pressure off me and I have such a wonderful time because it's for me and it's only for me and you know we deserve those things um, just for our own souls. And I think we've forgotten that, you know, that we can, we can get up in the morning and we can write a diary that entertains us or that makes us feel safer in ourselves or just more connected to ourselves. And that that is enough in itself. You know, no one need ever see it. Micro beans that I ended up with, you're saying we're not a failure. I am indeed a gardener in the making. You are absolutely a gardener in the making you know like I can that thing of growing something from a little seed you know I'm a city person I've always been a city person I've never had that experience and I can see the thrill of it um like we have some wild mint 
grown in our north facing swamp like garden. And the thrill of like thinking, oh, we need mint for this recipe. Thinking, Jesus Christ, hold on. It's actually out there. No, Alex, your five micro broad beans are yeah. a miracle. Like truly, mm. you planted them, you you gave them shelter, you know? And would they ever have grown if you hadn't loved them? Like, seriously, I would be really proud. I think yeah. anything growing from the ground is like, oh my God, it's it's witchcraft almost. It was like, it felt as if something catastrophic had happened or was about to happen. Mm -hmm. um, it was that level of kind of, kind of terror, I suppose. Um, and I know people couldn't understand because they were looking at my life from the outside and they were thinking, but look at her. Like she's written books and she has a house. And I mean, actually one journalist here in Ireland wrote that, you know, she said, what is Marion Keyes on about now? You know, she has a handsome husband. She has a good career and um, and has a, has a nice house. And but my feelings didn't know any of that. And I mean, um, every now and then, like I just glance off those feelings again. And, oh, it's horrendous. But it's never really come back in the same way. And, uh, and like, I suppose, you know, that feeling of every day of waking up and feeling halfway normal, it's just so lovely. You know, the joy of that, you know, and the fact that I can sit here and talk to you about it, you know, that I have that much distance on it. Um, and I know that isn't what you asked me, but I would really say to anyone who is suffering with poor mental health, and who feels that they will never feel normal again, they'll never get, get better. I, that is exactly how I felt. I just felt like I was a goner, I was done for. And, and I, you know, I'm not going to do that thing of turning a negative into a positive because, you know, if I had a choice, I wouldn't have gone through it. But I think there's, it's easier for me to feel joyous these days because I suppose the contrast is so great. And also, I mean, I, cha I changed my life. Like I don't work anything like as hard um, mm -hmm. as I used to. You know, I, I don't, I mean, even before the pandemic, I only, you know, I didn't travel the same way. I did and nothing like as much. And I kind of only say yes to the things that I feel will be fun or useful or that I'll enjoy. Mm -hmm. It was and, really uh, helpful. And it's the only time I've ever used a novel as, what's the word, catharsis. Like, it was so helpful to write my feelings. I gave them to Helen, you know. Um, it was, and I felt, I thought it might be helpful to people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I thought if people, you know, and at the time I couldn't find anyone who felt like me, you know, but I have since. Um, Family. And we had a great time, you know, we just have cook offs once a week and baking and it, it was just great, you know, it was like the whole world stopped and you got to have this amazing holiday and it felt like early retirement, you know, and I and I had so many sort of um, uh, awarenesses that uh, things that I, I realized which were fundamental about my life, um, which I wouldn't have got the chance to realize if I hadn't had the opportunity to stop. So for instance, I realized that I was working so hard that I wasn't really having a chance to enjoy my life, you know? Um, and it was a beautiful thing to be able to stop and have no responsibilities whatsoever and just be with my family and uh and just enjoy life so that was fantastic I that. and i wanted to also remain true to myself always in the sense that i wanted to always play positive images of women and black women in particular because that's those are the images i grew up around you know my mum is such a tremendous inspiration for me and um and the the friends and the family around me those women figures men were very missing in my life because my dad wasn't part of my life generally in the community i grew up in men were missing um, but i i remember these strong female um, females around me who are hugely intelligent and capable and working so hard and I, and I didn't see them represented on film on, 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 and on TV and I wanted to do that.
that, 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 oh, that's really interesting because so you felt that as a that was like a motivation you didn't feel that as a responsibility then did you or is it both it's both it's yeah. definitely both yeah so i think one of the best tips i've ever heard and it's from um emily fletcher or fletcher um, and she does a technique called the Ziva technique, um, Z-I-V-A. And I went on her, one of her courses. And um, the wonderful thing that she said is meditation is not about quietening your mind. Because up to that point, and I'd done so many meditation courses, I'd like, done Vipassana off in Italy and like done 10 days silent retreats and uh, done all kinds of transcendental meditation. I tried so many um, forms of meditation. And she was the first person who said, it's not about quieting you, quietening your mind. And if you're not quietening your mind, you're not failing. In fact, you're probably doing, having the best meditation ever. So long as you don't you know, lose yourself in the thought. So you don't start, I don't know, you'll start thinking about your shopping or what have you. And then you go off and yeah, actually I, you know what, I need bacon as well and some eggs and you know what I mean? Then you've lost yourself. But if you're just observing your mental chatter, your mental chatter invariably is not going to stop and that's okay. Um, so that's one of the things that I would say to kind of make it easier. And also that it doesn't have to be a really long time as well. Don't think you have to go into meditating from nothing to meditating for half an hour or an hour. It, that really is not necessary. You can start simply with just 10 minutes, just 10 minutes of being quiet with yourself, observing your breathing and observing your mental chatter. You're doing amazingly. If you can schedule that in every day, that's brilliant. And honestly, that 10 minutes will start to make a tremendous amount of difference to your life. You know, immediately mm -hmm. after grammar school, how did you stay, stay strong? Measure? How did you keep, you know, the faith that it work, would turn up? I mean, I, I don't know if I did really stay strong and motivated. I think I found it incredibly, well, I know I found it incredibly hard. And um, I did lose the faith many, many times. Um, I am incredibly lucky because my mum has always been like my biggest supporter, my biggest champion, and she's always believed in me. So when I have those dark moments, I always go to my mum and she's like, of course you're going to be successful. Of course you're going to achieve that. You know, she believes in me way more than I believe in myself. So I would say that everybody needs at least one champion in their lives. So when they're having those dark moments, they can just go to that person and get bolstered again. And that's what my mum did for me. You know, you Somebody else right. So yeah, it, uh, discoveries, lockdown discoveries. Um, lockdown discoveries were, I think, you know, what I, I said before really, which was that I think I was way too, you know, unbalanced in my life because it was so heavily focused on my career. Um, and I think I was working too much um, and not having enough downtime where <clears throat> there are, there was room for other areas of my life and I think I'd neglected friendships and neglected spending time with my family as well um so I'd now kind of reprioritized and rebalanced things well at least now it's easy to say that because I'm still effectively in lockdown so <laughs> let's see what happens when you know the film industry opens up again And I think self-talk is incredibly important, um, positive self-talk. And I, I tend to, I, I love a, the quote from, um, uh, uh, if you think you can, you can. If you think you can't, you can't. But either way, you're right. You, we, we make this, the, you know, the conditions for success and failure in, in here. Uh, and, you know, I'm, no, I'm not very good at that. Or I'll never do that. Or whatever. You will convince yourself not to do it. And so just to start changing the self-talk can be very powerful just to give yourself a choice stay curious stay in the moment don't allow that sort of i i feel crap or i i got the wrong answer or that fear of being judged which we we, we all have which can be overwhelming a lot of the time and just to say well i'm going to feel the fear and do it anyway and mm -hmm. you know as long as it doesn't you know, kill which me which thing triggered it and it would be helpful to try and lay to rest various things that might help but in the end the, the main thing is, 
understanding what is happening to you and to sort of say well I think it's because something happened to you in the bath age three isn't going to help that immediate fear of your heart going the sweat the sense that you know you cannot get through life like this and I had the weirdest thing that I at the time things were going pretty well for me so I immediately had jobs I immediately had success rather kind of uh, high uh, I had high exposure and I looked in a way that people wanted to employ at the time and I looked everything looked like it was great for me. And I do remember thinking how strange because I've always been very blithe and very happy-go-lucky. But the only time in my life when I felt like if the world is a, is a, a bowl of golden light and then around that is darkness, like just the egg, an egg yolk in a frying pan, I am not completely in the darkness. I've got one finger holding onto the edge of that bowl of light. I'm so not... I'm so not in that, but I look like I'm bathed in that. And trying to persuade people mm. of how scared I was or how ill I was, people didn't really believe me. You know, I, I'm very happily the head of the school, of drama school did, and I asked to be taken out of the lead parts. And I just couldn't imagine what would happen if I just keeled over or if these things happened. But actually people just didn't really believe me because I didn't look unwell, I looked very well. And that was a strange problem of having to sort of persuade people. So the biggest problem I think, you face if you're not is that people think pull yourself together you look fine you haven't got mm. anything obviously wrong mm. with you you haven't got a medical illness well you do have something wrong with you you have something very you know and when i played electra something profound happened i think i i realized that acting was not necessarily just about showing off it is also about real things and as it happened my brother had been killed some years two years before I played Electra and so the death of my brother which Electra in the play thinks her brother's dead and she, or she hears her brother's dead and so she has this terrible grief about it and I realized that I couldn't I couldn't just choose how I played that 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 had to be dignified in relation to my own grief about my brother that it is a real thing that you're playing with real feelings not just with play feelings they're real feelings and I I think uh that in that way that was seminal yes I mean you know we are only actors you know I I, I know people who have lost families I, I I I mean this is vicarious what we do it's not dangerous what we do it's maybe you know it's a privilege to throw light on these things but there are people you know <sighs> the Rohingyas and I, I mean the people who are the suffering in this world is unbearable and I do think you know our newspapers and our media are getting caught on the royal family or on Brexit or on these are tiny things there is huge suffering in the world and we do not look at it enough and it is the thing that would humanize us I mean I am so privileged as is anybody who sees a play or is in a play to be in a world where that can be of course we're not now we're getting a tiny dose of something that will that that in, impedes our our cultural um absorption but culture is you know such a privilege it is the it is the top of a, of a civilization that culture should exist it it is a wonderful moment and i've had a lifetime of it so i, I don't think i understand suffering the way the people who suffer understand suffering my job has been very easy